And now let's see how we can do code splitting in React, which in turn will allow us to progressively load or lazy load our application. Before we take a look at the code, let's discuss the main benefits of such approach. First, improve performance by splitting up a code into smaller, more manageable chunks, we can reduce the size of the initial JavaScript payload. That needs to be loaded. This results in faster load times and improved performance, especially on slow networks or low-end devices. Second, better user experience. With code splitting, only the essential code needed for the initial render of your application is loaded. The remaining code is loaded as the user interacts with your application, leading to a smoother, less blocking user experience. You see, especially when it comes to bigger projects, not all the pages and components are equal, meaning there are certain resources that are used more often by the users. For example, typically, which page do you think gets more traffic? The home page or the contact page? So, million dollar question. If some resources are used less often than the other ones, does it make sense to jam all of that code when we initially ship our application to the browser? Because keep in mind, the more code we send, the more time it will take for the browser to compile it, which in turn will affect how fast the user can interact with our application. So wouldn't it be nice if we could prioritize the important resources over the less important ones? In order to lazy load our components or progressively load our application, we'll use a tool called Suspense. Now, Suspense is a series of APIs, and it actually has been around for quite some time. But at this point in time, only the code splitting feature, which we're about to cover, is fully supported. Other ones are still experimental, including data fetching. And therefore, we won't discuss them at this time. Lastly, in our example, we'll progressively load a big component when the user clicks the button. However, a more realistic scenario is to lazy load our components when we have multiple pages, which is something we'll cover when we discuss routing in React. So this is just general info, and we will revisit this topic later on in the course. Okay, and now let's see suspense in action. For that, we want to navigate back to the same folder, the 04 React 18. And notice over there, I created a slow component. And essentially, the idea is going to be exactly the same as in the previous setup, where I want to create 5,000 items. Remember, those are images. And then in the component, I'll use use state. I'll set this one up as default value. And essentially, I just want to render them on a screen. So now I want to go back to index.jsx. And effectively, I'm not going to touch any of this logic, I just want to showcase something. So I'm going to go below this is pending. And I'll just showcase the slow component. And as I said, you know, I'll just refresh just so we don't have two of them on the screen. So still within a section, I want to go with slow component. Let's save that we should eventually see the component on the screen. So let me refresh notice it took a little bit of time. But Eventually, we see those 5000 items. Again, the idea is exactly the same. This time, we're not getting them from the input, we are importing the component. And of course, the reason why everything is happening so slow is because I'm still throttling the CPU. Now, what's also interesting, if I navigate to the bigger screen, you'll notice in the network tab, more specifically, if we look for JS, since we are right away displaying the slow component, we are also importing the JavaScript code, correct? But what if we have a different setup? 
what if I create a state value? And I'm going to call this show and set show. And I'll set it equal to, let's say, the default one will be false. So that's my Boolean value. Then I'll set up a button that toggles it. So right above the component, I'm going to go with my button. I'll set up on click. Let's invoke here the set show. So set show and we'll set it equal to the opposite value, whatever it is in the state. And let's just call this toggle. Now in this case, I do want to add a class. So class name is equal to BTN. And then when it comes to slow component, I want to go with show. And only if the value is true, I want to display it. So let's go over here. Let's save. Again, let me navigate to the big screen. And notice, even though I'm displaying this component only when the value is true, I'm still importing right out of the gate, right? So I'm still grabbing that JavaScript logic, even though there's no guarantee that the user will click the button. And essentially, it would be better if we only import this logic when we actually need to display that component, correct? So instead of importing everything on our initial render, which of course is going to add the loading time, we only want to import that slow component when the user actually wants to work with it. In this case, clicks the toggle button. So how we can do that? Well, we need to first navigate up and we'll need to grab two things. We'll need to grab suspense component. So this is a component that React provides, and we also need to go with lazy. Then we have this somewhat interesting setup where we want to go with const. We need to come up with a name. In my case, it's still going to be slow component, and that is equal to lazy. So invoke this. Then we provide a function, and then we go with import. So as you can see, now we're importing this dynamically. So we go with forward slash and of course, the path is still the same. So now I want to remove this one, the straight up import, and then let's keep on moving. And now we want to wrap our component in the suspense. And we also want to provide some kind of fallback. So I'm going to go and I'll wrap the slow component in the suspense, suspense component, then fallback prop, basically, what do we want to display when we're loading? And I'll just cheat. I'll grab this value over here. And after that, we want to place the slow component inside of the suspense. And now notice something interesting. When I navigate to the big screen and refresh, you won't see anywhere the import for the slow component JavaScript code. Only once I click here, notice, then I'm importing which again is really, really awesome because it allows us to decrease our initial load time since we're not grabbing all of the JavaScript code and only if the user decides to interact with the component, only then we import. So essentially, this is how we can lazy load our components. Or in other words, we only import the functionality when there's a need for it. One last thing before I let you go, typically, we will wrap our entire return in suspense. Since that way we can lazy load multiple components. Now, the syntax and the result is the same. We will still provide fallback prop. And for all of the components we import progressively, the fallback value in this case, the loading text will be displayed. The reason why I wrapped only the slow component in the previous example was just to underscore which component will get that fallback value.